Hi, welcome to Lumi. In this video, we will introduce the definition of derivatives, which is one of the most important content in this course. We will define derivatives by introducing rate of change and categorizing rate of change into two different categories. First, average rate of change, and second, instantaneous rate of change. But for better understanding of average rate of change, we're going to introduce a real world example. So just so you know, derivatives are not that abstract. In fact, it is very strongly related to our life. Let us consider the following problem. Suppose you're driving a car in a straight line. The table below shows where you are at every second. So for example, at one second, you're 100 meters. And at two seconds, you're at 150 meters. And so on and so forth. Here, the question is asking us to find the average velocity or the average rate of change from two seconds to four seconds. I am certain that most of you guys are familiar with the equation of a slope. Here, you have to find the slope of the secant line to the curve. Here, all I need to do is just write V of the average velocity is equal to 400 minus 150 over four minus two, which equals to 125 meters per second. That is really not hard to understand since the average velocity should equal to the change in displacement divided by the time pass. Now let us discuss the instantaneous velocity or the instantaneous rate of change at t equals to two seconds. Of course, we can measure the displacement at any time. Then to calculate the instantaneous velocity at t equals to two seconds, we should measure the displacement at a time as close to two as we possibly wanted. And by that, what I mean is that I choose the values of x to be so close to a that is insignificant, or it becomes almost one point. In fact, if you want to find the slope at the point p of a and f of a, maybe you don't have any idea when you're trying to solve for that problem at the beginning. We go back to our previous velocity question and treat x as time. Then you may have some ideas. So if x is not close to a, we can clearly see the slope of the line pq to be equal to f of x minus f of a over x minus a. Now, if you want to find the slope at the point p of a and f of a, we need to move x as close to a as possible. Therefore, the point Q will move as close to P as possible. If Q is close to P enough, then the slope of PQ is approximately equal to the slope of the point P. At this point, we have enough intuitive discussions of the rate of change, the slope, and basic ideas of what derivatives could be. Now we list some definitions. X is getting closer to A as we wanted. That means that limit of X approaches A. Then we can say the tangent line to the curve Y equals to F of X at the point P of A and F of A is the line through P with a slope of M equal to limit of X approaching A of F of X minus F of A over x minus a, provided that the limits must exist, of course. Here we have a graph of a tangent line at a point P for the function f of x. As you may see, a tangent line hits the curve only at one point. Here we have hitting the graph at one point P, meaning that I've chosen the point Q so close to P that is insignificant, meaning that this line is considered hitting the graph at one point specifically. So now let us discuss the derivative of a function at a singular point. The derivative of the function f at the number a is denoted by the derivative of the function f of a or f prime of a to be just the slope of the tangent line at that point a and f of a. So we can write f prime of a equals to limit of x approaching a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a. And of course, in this case, the limit must exist. 
Notice that x approaches a means that the distance between x and a become so insignificantly small. So we call it a value of h so insignificantly small of 0 0.0001, right? So we can say that this h value is insignificant and neglectable. So we can have an alternative notation of derivatives of a function f at the number a. And the alternative notation of the function f prime of a is just equal to h approaching zero of f of a plus h minus f of a over h. So by definition, by looking at the graph, we look at, we have the point a and we have a point a plus h. But I said I consider h to be a very small value. I call it 0 0.001. You can call it 0 0.00001, any of the sorts. But here, I consider h to be a very small and insignificant value, meaning that a and a plus h are so close to one another, right, that the point Q almost becomes the point P. It's not the point P, but it almost becomes the point P, meaning that you're finding the slope of the tangent line at a specific point. So it's no longer the secant line, the slope that you're finding, it's the tangent line. To solidify what we just talked about, let's go through an example. The question asks us, find an equation of a tangent line to the parabola y equals to x squared at the point p of 1 and 1. Here we have a to be equal to 1, and we have an f of x equals to x squared. So that the slope of the derivative at x equals to 1 can be found by the equation of the slope, which is m equals to the limit of x approaching 1 of f of x minus f of 1 over x minus 1. So here, when we plug it back from the equation, you will have x squared minus 1, because if you plug in 1 into the equation, you will just get 1, and you get x minus 1, right? So the next step is I simplify it by factoring. So I factor out the numerator, and I see that x minus 1 and x minus 1 cancels out. And in the last step, I have limit of x plus 1 as x approaches 1. So the solution or the derivative or the slope of the tangent line at the point 1 and 1 is just 2. Using the point slope form of the equation of a line, we find that the equation of the tangent line, because they ask for the equation of the tangent line at point 1 and 1, it's just going to equal to y minus 1 equals to 2x minus 1. Or you can just write it as y equals to 2x minus 1. We already have a definition of a derivative at a point. But obviously, that's not enough. Since we have to analyze the function, we can calculate this derivative at every point one by one. To solve this problem, I'll introduce the derivative as a function. So the definition of a derivative of f is defined by f prime of x equals to the limit of h approaching 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x over h. Another thing that I wanted to bring up to your attention is that the domain of the derivative of x is the set of x's where f prime of x exists. This may be smaller than the domain of the function f itself. Now, let us discuss some other notations of derivatives that could be used, and I don't want you to be surprised. So here we have f prime of x, you have y prime, you have dy over dx, so that means the derivative of the function y with respect to the variable x, which is important because we're going to talk about implicit differentiation and how this could be useful later. Then you have d of f over d of x, you have d of f of x over d of x, and you have d of f of x. The symbol d and d, of x, d over d of x are called differentiation operators. Derivatives are generally very important since it is strongly related to the slope of a function. So calculating the derivative of a function can provide us a lot of information about the rate of change of this function at a specific point. Now here comes a new question. How do we calculate the derivative of a function Directly. The first idea that comes into mind is using the definition of derivatives. 
Here, for example, the question is asking us to find the derivative of the function f of x equals to 1 minus x over 2 plus x. To solve this problem, first I use the definition of derivative, which is the equation that was provided you guys earlier. Now, all I have to do is plug in the value x plus h into the original equation, so I end up with 1 minus x plus h over 2 plus x plus h minus f of x itself, so the original function itself, 1 minus x over 2 plus x, the whole thing over h. The next step that I have is to expand and use the common denominator to simplify this equation as much as possible. So when I do the expansion and I do the common denominator, I end up with the following equation as limit approaches zero. After the simplification, I consider what variables can be canceled out with one another. In this case, you see minus xh minus xh cancels out here x squared cancels out with x squared, x cancels out with x, and 2 cancels out with 2. So in the numerator, what I end up with is negative 3h, and the denominator remains the same. I see that the h on the numerator and the h in the denominator can also cancel out. So I end up with negative 3 over the denominator without the h, as h approaches 0. Now I can just directly substitute the value of h approaching 0 into the function, and I end up with negative 3 over 2 plus x squared. So that's the derivative of the function using the principles of derivative. So finding the derivative of a function by definition is complicated. Luckily, there are some derivative results and rules and laws and properties that we can use to simplify these calculations. Not all functions have derivatives on their whole domain, by the way. Now let us discuss differentiability. A function f is called differentiable at a if the derivative of the function at the point a exists. It is differentiable on the open interval a to b or a to infinity or negative infinity to a or negative infinity to positive infinity if it is differentiable at every number in that interval. Now let us discuss the relationship of differentiability versus continuity. I will definitely discuss this topic furthermore in future videos. But for now, if f is differentiable at point A, then f is continuous at point A. If f is not continuous at A, then f is not differentiable at the point A. Similar to discontinuity and limit not existing, there are three cases where the function fails to be differentiable. The first case is a corner or a cusp. Although the corner function is still continuous, but the slope has a sudden change at that corner. So we can determine the derivative at that corner, so f prime of a at the point a here does not exist. The second type of this kind of non-differentiable variation is called a discontinuity. So this case is obvious, right? Since the left side limit and the right side limit don't exist, that means that it's discontinuous. And by definition of what we talked about earlier, if it's not continuous, it is not differentiable at that specific point. Now, the third type is a vertical tangent line. Here, f prime of a is infinity which means usually we treat f of f prime of a to not exist at that point. So that means that this is not differentiable, even though it is continuous. Differentiation is an operation on functions that we can apply multiple times. For example, you can take the first derivative, and the second step would be the second derivative, and it can be written as f double prime, or it could be as d of d of y over d of x of d of x or d2y over dx2. And this is the notation for the second derivative. The nth derivative can be written as fn. So it's not the power. So fn x equals to d of n of y over d of x of n. In summary, in today's video, we introduced the definition of derivatives of a point from the idea of average rate of change 
and the instantaneous rate of change. And then we also define the tangent line. After that, we learn the derivative of a function, then calculate the function's derivative using the definition of derivatives. Then we talked about the differentiability and the cases which a function could be differentiable. After that, we talked about the cases in which it could be differentiable and continuous, but in cases where it is not differentiable. And at the very end, we discussed higher order derivatives. So in future videos, we will introduce many rules, properties, and tricks to help us calculating derivatives much simpler and much faster than we did today. That's all for our video today. Thank you guys for watching.